What's happening guys? Welcome back to another video. So today, instead of just doing a bunch of updates, we're gonna show you all the systems we've been building, where we're at, and I'm gonna do it video by video so it's easy to follow and not too terribly long. Without any further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started, but don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment. Mm. So those of you that know, we have been working on an aquaculture and uh, it's built. It's not to the degree we want, uh, so we do still have some automation to place. Uh, I think our tally came up to about $500, and again, we're, we're overshooting. But I'm going to go ahead and get this guy uncovered, and uh, we'll talk about what an aquaculture is and how it works. All right. This is our aquaculture. We just had a little bit of a shade cloth kind of covering it. Um, those are the old totes down there. The old tote down there, we got it cut in half and, you know, processing for sand beds and stuff. But this is the beauty of the moment. This is the old IBC tote that y'all used to see. As you can see, plenty of oxygen. The water is pumping. Duckweeds are growing. And we also have guppies in there. Um, our air pump's a little OP still, but uh, you know, as we increase, it'll, it'll, it'll be able to grow with us, which is nice. Um, we have some insulation and just some styrofoam around here to kind of help keep it at temperature. That over there, that gray thing, is actually a water heater. So as the water pump pushes the water back in here, it heats it up. And only one of these air tubings that you see here are actually going to an air bubbler. All the rest go to a sponge filter, which is a biological filter that helps process fish waste into a, um, a non-harmful substance, so to speak, for the fish. Um, what happens is, is uh, as you can see, the water comes in down over here and it flows down to the bottom of this pipe. Now, as the water level rises, as you can see, it goes up the pipe, across here, and into here. And this is just to help keep it from causing a water siphon to where it sucks out the water because we did have an issue with that at first. So it goes down to the bottom of the pipe, down to the bottom of the barrel and slowly the water will rise through different layers of rock and sand. It's called a gravel filter, uh, which is both a solids and biological filter. So the, as the water level's rising, you have river rock at the bottom, followed by utility rock, followed by pea gravel, followed by sand. Um, and like I said, so it just keeps coming through. All of the, uh, the hard uh, substances or the, uh, the solids stay at the bottom and the water comes through biological filtration. What this bad boy is, this is actually a clean out pipe, which has, there's a square in there, you know, a sealed square with uh, holes all along the bottom. So the solids that are down there, whenever I uh, connect a, um, an air tubing here and, and blow air through it from an air compressor, those bubbles are gonna push those solids up and we'll be able to remove it Later on, we're gonna add a T, and then what we'll do is we'll cap this off, and it'll force those solids out of a T into a barrel we have. But the clean water that's already began filtration comes through this pipe, and this is a piece of shade cloth, like to, you know, take out any debris, since these are open. And then there's just a bunch of lupus and stuff down there, sponges, uh, with no chemicals in them. And that's our biological filtration, so, all the bacterium live in, in all this different stuff and continue to process the water. At the bottom, we have a, uh, a crate with our water pump inside that pushes it right back up. And that, that's pretty much that's how the aquaculture works. Um, like I said, it costs us about $500, give or take. We are overshooting. Um, you know, uh, if you've seen any of our other videos, you know that we trade and barter, so realistically, uh, $500 is just kind of a, a meh number, um, a yes and no sort of situation. Um, but anywho, as we, as you can see, we can most definitely fit two more of our IBC totes here, meaning we could probably have 100 to 200 pounds worth of fish in these at any given time. Uh, to crank the system a little bit more, what we're going to actually be doing is in this barrel over here, eventually we're going to hook up a float valve to where when the water level goes down or decreases, the water will automatically kick on and begin filling this barrel to where it can continue pumping water. Um, in uh, one of our other totes over here, I'm 
gonna try to put, I'm hoping to put it in here. I'm actually gonna get another water pump that's on a timer and it's going to pump all the way to our garden over there and that's how we're gonna water our garden. And the reason is, is because water changes help keep the fish uh, in a state of growth. So not all fish, but there are some, especially the ones we're gonna be getting, channel catfish, um, they actually release a hormone or chemical that uh, whenever it reaches a certain limit, they either severely start um, slow their growth or they uh, stop growing altogether. So by having lots of biological filtration and uh, regular you know, water changes, that's gonna help keep our system clean and our fish happy, healthy, and increase their growth phenomenally, almost like they're in a river. Um, we have to water our garden regardless, so it's not exactly a waste, uh, which it would have been traditionally if we were just doing water changes with it also being a severe amount of work. Um, and then also for the feeding, what we would like to eventually do is over here, you can see that we have a, uh, a uh, the, this, red, this red lid here. Eventually we want to build almost like a cone and put a deer feeder up here to where we can fill it with catfish food and it'll regularly feed our fish without us having to. So that way we can focus on spending time with our animals and just monitoring their health overall and less time physically doing the labor. Um, we also do have our barrels here. These barrels, and I'm actually missing a barrel. I'm not too sure where I, I think I have it off on the side somewhere. But uh, I have two of these and one of this, these. And we're going to be using these to do our breeding program uh, later on at the end of the year. So we will be getting fingerlings hopefully come spring. Um, you know, it's not even winter yet. Uh, but this system is set up to help keep everything from freezing. Um, so spring we'll get our fingerlings and then come fall uh, we will harvest the fish that grew the biggest, the fastest, and the, that were the healthiest and we'll use them as breeding pairs in uh, one or two of these, these bad boys, at least until we get an, uh, you know, all these barrels full of fingerlings and then they'll, the, the parents will go back in the system and we'll keep them isolated. Um, as our as our breeding pair uh, and obviously we're gonna have more fingerlings than we can actually use so again the excess fingerlings will become alternative feed for our chickens or our maggot bucket over here uh, really really whatever works and you know we'll just take that storm as it comes uh, we did uh, we did go ahead and wrap with electrical tape here to kind of help just keep water off of these sockets um, you know for safety reasons uh, overall, this thing doesn't run much power uh, in terms of its capability. Um, like I said, this system as is can currently run three IBC totes, which is almost a thousand gallons. So really, it's just waiting on us to get the rest of the IBC totes, get the tarps and wrap it, you know, the, the traditional stuff. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. The, the, like I said, the aqua, aquaculture will predominantly take care of itself. Um, it's mostly built. We're very happy with how it turned out. Uh, there were there were some things that I wasn't quite ready for in terms of like learning. Um, so a good example would be a good example of that would be like this this right here. This T was actually an elbow joint, but we were getting so many bubbles coming out of there um, that it wasn't actually able to filter. And it's because it was causing a suction. So we ended up running with two T's. Problem solved. Uh, this system has been running for a few weeks now, or a week or two now. Uh, it's doing great. I'm happy with it. And I, I really do think that, that we're probably just going to leave it as is, again, outside of the automation and adding two more IBC totes to increase our system size. Um, and of course, like I said, uh, we do have a setup for sand beds. So once I build sand beds off to the side, we will be... Um, using the water pump to pump uh, water up to the garden bed as well as the sand bed. So um, all together, it, you know, we're going to make sure to maximize our overall usage out of the, the pumps that we have running so where they're not a total, you know, waste. Um, so that's pretty much it for our aquaculture. As usual, don't forget to like, subscribe, drop a comment. Uh, I enjoy doing this for you guys. Uh, peace, be kind out there, and we'll see you on the next video.